it's on the up for you know the last few weeks really we had that uh, press conference uh, you know a week or so two uh, two weeks ago with ron powell and and you know kind of the surprised uh, hawkish uh, dot plot that we got with one rate cut kind of expected this year but what I think is actually interesting to the dollar moving higher right now is um, arguably it's a lot about other central banks making the move first to cut interest rates. Uh, if you take a look today at the euro against the dollar, or if you look at the the British pound against the US dollar, what we see here is that they've uh, all kind of gotten beat up against the dollar. That is, except for one, which is the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar actually holding its own today uh, because last night out of Australia, we did get the latest inflation figures. Uh, and those inflation figures out of Australia were hotter than expected. And so um, we were expecting 3.8% from the RBA. And what we got instead was 4%. So inflation remaining sticky, not just in the US, but also in Australia. That being said, it doesn't change the overall story this year, uh, at least for now, which is a lot of other central banks are looking to cut interest rates. While we also got commentary from Fed officials this week that was more hawkish, uh, Bowman specifically, which is a notable um, hawkish member of the Fed, mentioned uh, the willingness to actually raise interest rates if progress isn't made. And meanwhile, other Fed officials are kind of landing in the camp of uh, we won't cut rates until we see substantial progress. And that gets the market a little jittery, especially when you say, OK, well, well, here you have the Fed who is hesitant and seemingly not willing to cut rates, not feeling forced to cut rates, not feeling the pressure to cut rates. Meanwhile, you have the peers, the counterparts, already beginning to cut interest rates. The ECB has already made a move of 25 basis points, the Bank of Canada as well. Then you have the Bank of England, which looks to be on the uh, kind of the precipice of, of coming into a rate cut cycle themselves. They're at 2% inflation. Meanwhile, the US is still above the threes. Uh, I think, you know, I've said it on the podcast before, but I think you probably need to see a couple consecutive uh, inflation reads in the twos in order for the Fed to at least feel comfortable with the idea of rate cuts. But we're not quite there. And here we are going into July. So something to think about. And we're going to see another indicator of the US inflation numbers with the PCE. That's the core inflation on Friday. So maybe some more clues. Yes. And a lot of pressure even on uh, on this Friday, because, again, uh, as you see, <clears throat> you know, the US dollar strength is coming from the relativism of other central banks uh, wanting to cut sooner. <clears throat> but with, as you mentioned, the PCE numbers on Friday, we'll get a look at what the inflation story is looking like. Uh, you know, is there is there a cooler than expected print, which might offset some of this recent dollar strength? Or is, um, you know, are, are we kind of going to see continued push on the dollar with hotter than expected reads? It's not out of the question that that is possible. There's another story kind of brewing under the surface that we've talked about recently, uh, which has been the oil concept. Oil's up the last you know few weeks. We've seen a pretty big jump on uh, both Brent and WTI. And so that rising oil price could also offer some sticky inflation problems, not just for the U.S., but for global um you know, kind of the fight against inflation. That being said, we also have on Thursday or tomorrow uh, at the time of recording this, we have GDP numbers, final GDP out of the United States. Probably not the biggest market mover, but uh, another, you know, piece of information to look out for could be um, pushing the dollar one way or the other. Uh, for currency traders, it is definitely still uh, worth keeping an eye on growth and tandem with the inflation story. If you enjoyed this video from the Market Insights Market Pulse podcast, you can listen to the full episode by clicking the link down below in the description. You can find us on your favorite podcasting apps. And again, we post several times a week. So if you're looking for market updates throughout the week, this is the place to be, whether you're in the, in the car on the way to work or something like that, make sure to tune in to get the latest. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.